Hi guys, uh, welcome and uh, today's topic is on AWS auto scaling. So this is Akhil. I would be taking up a tutorial on the auto scaling. But before that, I would request you guys to subscribe our channel. The link you can find just below this video at the right side. Let's begin with our tutorial and uh, let's look into what we have in a today's uh, session. So I would be covering up uh, why we require AWS auto scaling. Uh, what is uh, AWS auto scaling? What are the benefits uh, of uh, using the scaling service? How this auto scaling works? The different scaling plans we have. Uh, what is the difference between the snapshot and the AMI? What is the load balancer? And how many types of load balancers we have? And along with that, I would be covering up a real life demo on the AWS. Let's begin with why we require AWS auto scaling. Now, before AWS Cloud Scaling, there was a question in the mind of enterprises that uh, they were spending a lot of uh, money on the purchase of the infrastructure. If they have to set up some kind of a solution, so they have to purchase an infrastructure and a one-time cost was required. So that was a burden for them in terms of uh, procuring a server, hardware, software, and then having a team of experts to manage all those infrastructure. So they used to think that no longer they require these resources uh, if there was a cost efficient solution for their project that was the project manager used to think now after the aws cloud scaling that was introduced uh, automatically the auto scaling maintains the application performance based on the user requirements at the lowest possible price so what does the auto scaling does is uh, that whenever there is a scalability required it manages it automatically and hence the cost optimization became possible now, what is AWS Auto Scaling? Let's look into deep. So, AWS Auto Scaling is a service uh, that helps users to monitor their applications and the servers and automatically adjust the capacity of uh, their infrastructure to maintain the steadiness. So, they can increase the capacity, they can even decrease the capacity also for the cost optimization. And also, predictable performance at the lowest possible cost. Now, what are the benefits of auto scaling? It gave the better fault tolerance applications. Uh, you can get the servers created and you can have a clone copy of the servers so that you don't have to deploy the applications again and again. Better cost management because uh, the scalability is decided by the AWS automatically based on some threshold parameters. It was a reliable uh, service and uh, whenever the scaling is created or initiated, you can get the notifications uh, onto your mail IDs or to your cell phones. Uh, scalability, as I mentioned, uh, is always there in the auto scaling. It can scale up, it can scale down as well. And it has the flexibility, the flexibility in terms of uh, whenever you want to schedule it, if you want to stop it, if you want to keep the size of the servers at a fixed number, uh, you can always make the changes on the fly. And the better availability. Now. With the use of the auto scaling, we come around with uh, the terminology called snapshot and the AMI. Let's look into the difference between the snapshots and the AMI. Uh, snapshots versus AMI. Uh, so, in a company, there was one of the employee that was facing an issue with launching the virtual machines. So, he asked his colleague a question: Is it possible to launch multiple virtual machines with a minimum amount of time? Because it takes a lot of time in terms of creating the virtual machines. The other colleague said that yes, it is possible to launch multiple EC2 instance and that can be done at a lesser time and with the same configuration. And this can be done either you use a snapshot or the AMI on the AWS. Then the colleague said that what are the differences between the snapshot and AMI? Uh, let's look into the difference now. Uh, the snapshots basically kind of a backup of a single EBS volume, which is just like a virtual hard drive. That is attached to the EC2 instance. Whereas the AMI, it is basically used as a backup of an EC2 instance only. The snapshots opts for this when the instance contains multiple static EBS volume. When you opt for the snapshot, whenever the instance contains multiple static EBS volumes. AMI, this is widely used to replace the failed uh, EC2 instance. In the snapshots uh, here, you pay only for the storage of the modified data. Whereas uh, with the AMI, 
you pay only for the storage that you use. Uh, the snapshots are non bootable images on EBS volume, whereas AMI are bootable images on the EC2 instance. However, creating an AMI image will also create the EBS snapshots. Now, how does AWS auto scaling work? Let's look into it. So, for the AWS auto scaling to work, you have to configure single unified scaling policy per application resource. And this scaling policy with that you can explore the applications also and then select the service you want to scale also for the optimization select do you want to optimize the cost or do you want to optimize the performance and then keep track of scaling by monitoring or getting the notifications now what are the different scaling plans we have so in the auto scaling a scaling plan basically helps a user to configure a set of instructions for scaling based on the particular software requirement. The scaling strategy basically guides the service of AWS auto scaling on how to optimize resources in a particular application. So it's basically uh, kind of uh, the parameters that you set it up so that how the resource optimization can be achieved uh, in the auto scaling. Uh, with the scaling strategies, users can create their own strategy based on their required metrics and thresholds and this can be changed on the fly as well. What are the two types of scaling policies we have? So, there are basically dynamic scaling and the predictive scaling. Uh, now, what is dynamic scaling? Uh, it basically guides the service of AWS auto scaling on how to optimize the resources. And it is helpful in optimizing resources for availability and particular price. Now, with scaling strategies, users can create their plan based on the required metrics and thresholds. So, a metric can be like, let's say, a network in, network out, or it can be a CPU utilization, memory utilization, likewise. Now, in the predictive scaling, its objective is to predict future workload based on daily and weekly trends and regular forecast future network traffic. So, it is kind of a, a forecast that happens based on the previous past experiences. It uses a machine learning technique for analyzing that network traffic and this scaling is like how weather forecast works, right? It provides schedule scaling actions to ensure the resource capacity is available for application requirement. Now, with the auto scaling, you would need the load balancers also because if there are multiple instances that are created, then you would need a load balancer to distribute uh, the load to those instances. So. Let's understand what do we mean by a load balancer. A load balancer basically acts as a reverse proxy and it is responsible for distributing the network or the application traffic across multiple servers. With the help of a load balancer, you can achieve a reliability, you can achieve a fault tolerance of an application. That is basically, it increases the fault tolerance and the reliability. So for example, when there is a high network traffic that is coming to your application and if that much traffic comes to your application to the instances, your instances may crash. So how you can avoid that situation? So you need to manage the network traffic that is coming to your instances and that can be done with the load balancer. So thanks to the AWS load balancers which helps in distributing network traffic across backend servers in a way that it increases performance of an application. Here in the image you can see that the traffic coming from a different resources landing onto the EC2 instance. And the load balancer is actually distributing that traffic to all the three instances, hence managing the network traffic quite properly. Now, what are the types of load balancers we have? Uh, there are three types of load balancers uh, on the AWS. One is the classic load balancer, second is the application load balancer, and the third one is the network load balancer. Let's look into what we have in the classic load balancer. So the classic load balancer is the most basic form of load balancing, and uh, we call it as a primitive load balancer also. And it is widely used for the EC2 instances. It is based on the IP address and the TCP port, and it routes network traffic between end users as well as in between the backend servers. And uh, it does not support host based routing and it results in low efficiency of resources. Let's look into what we have in the application load balancer. Uh, this is one of the advanced forms of load balancing. It performs a task on the application level in the OSI model. Uh, it is used when there are HTTP and HTTPS traffic routing is required and also it supports the host-based and path-based routing and performs well with the microservices or the backend applications. 
The network load balancer performs the task at layer 4 of the connection level in the OSI module. Uh, the prime role of the network load balancer is to route the TCP traffic and it can manage a massive amount of traffic and is also suitable to manage the low latencies. Let's look into the demo uh, and see how practically we can create the auto scaling. Hi guys, let's look into the demo for how we can create an auto scaling on the AWS console. So right now I'm logged in into the AWS console and I am in the Mumbai region. Uh, what you need to do is you have to go to the compute section and under that click on the EC2 service. Let's wait for the EC2 service to come. Now just scroll down and under the load balancing uh, there is an option called auto scaling. So there first you have to create a launch configuration and then after that you have to create the auto scaling probes. So click on launch configuration. And then uh, you have to click on create launch configurations. So click on create launch configuration. Now this launch configuration is basically uh, the set of parameters that you define while launching an auto scaling so that this uniformity is maintained with all the instances. So that includes let's say if you select a Windows OS or a Linux OS that particular type of an operating system will be implemented in all the instances that will be part of an auto scaling. So there are certain set of parameters that we have to specify during the launch configuration so that we can have a uniformity in terms of launching the servers. So here uh, I would select an Amazon Linux AMI and then I would select the type of a server which will be t2.micro. Click on configure details, put the name to the launch configuration let's say we put it as a demo and uh, the rest of the things we'll keep it default click on add storage uh, since it's a linux ami we can go with the 8 gb storage that should be fine click on configure security group uh, let's create a new security group which has the ssh port open and that is open for anywhere which is uh, basically source ipv4 and ipv6 ips any ip will be able to access that Click on review, uh, just review your launch configuration. If you want to make changes, you can do that. Otherwise, uh, click on create a launch configuration. Uh, you would need the key pair and this key pair will be a unique key pair, which will be used with all the instances that are part of the auto scaling group. So we can select an existing key pair if you have that, otherwise you can create a new key pair. Uh, so I have an existing key pair, I'll go with that, acknowledge it and click on create launch configuration. Now uh, we have successfully uh, launched the configuration of an auto scaling. The next thing is to create an auto scaling group. So click on create an auto scaling group using this launch configuration. Uh, put a group name, let's say we put something like test and the group size to start with, uh, it says one instance. So that means at least a single instance will always be running and it will be initiated and running 24 cross 7 till the auto scaling is available. You can increase the size of the minimum base instances also. Let's say you can change it to two also. So you would get at least two servers running all the time. So we'll go with the one instance. Uh, the network would be the VPC default and uh, in the VPC per particular region, we can uh, select the availability zones. So let's say if I select availability zone 1A and then availability zone 1B, so how the instances will be launched, uh, so one instance will be launched in 1A, the other one in the 1B, the third one in the 1A, fourth one in the 1B. Likewise, it will uh, be equally spreaded among the availability zones. Next part is to configure the scaling policies, so click on it. Uh, if you want to keep this group at its initial size, let's say if you want to go with only a single instance or two instances and you don't want the scaling to progress, you can put it. Uh, keep this group at its initial size. So this is basically a way to halt the scaling. But we'll use the scaling policies to adjust the capacity of this group. So click on it. And we would scale between let's say minimum one instance that we have and we'll scale it between one to four instances. And uh, what condition on what basis these instances will be scaled up or scaled down would be defined in the scale group size. So the scaling policies you can implement uh, based on a scale group size or using the simple scaling policies using the steps. 
So in the scale group size, uh, you have uh, certain metrics. Uh, you can use average CPU utilization. You can define a metric related to average network in, average network out, or the load balancer request counts per target. And if you create the simple scaling policies using steps, then you need to create the alarms. And there you can get some more metrics that you can add up as a parameter for the auto scaling. Let's go with the scaling group size. Uh, let's go with the metric type as average CPU utilization. And the target value here you have to specify what would be the threshold that when the instance CPU utilization is crossed, then a new instance should be initiated. So you can put a reasonable threshold for that. Let's say we put something like 85%. And whenever the instance CPU utilization is crossed, 85% threshold, uh, you will see that there will be a new instance created. Let's go to the next uh, configure notifications. And here you can add notifications. Uh, so let's say if there is a new instance that is initiated and you want to basically be notified, so you can get notifications over your email IDs or you can get it on the cell phones. So for that, for adding the notification, you would need the SNS service and that is called as a simple notification service. And uh, you have to create a topic there. You have to subscribe for the topic using your email ID and then you should get the notifications. Uh, click on configure tags. Uh, the tags are not mandatory. You can basically put a tag. Uh, let's say if you want to identify the instance or the purpose it was created. Otherwise, you can leave it blank also. Click on review and uh, review your scaling policies, notification, tags, as well as the scaling group details. Click on create auto scaling group, and here you go. Your scaling has been launched. Click on close. And you should get at least a single instance initiated automatically by the auto scaling. So let's wait for the details to appear. So here you can see our launch configuration name, demo, auto scaling group name, test, minimum instance we want, one, the maximum instances we want, four. We have selected two availability zones AP South 1A, AP South 1B, and uh, the instance one has been initiated and if you want to verify where exactly this instance has been initiated just click on the instances here and here you will see that uh, our single instance has been initiated that is in service and that has been initiated in ap south 1b now once uh, the threshold of this instance crosses 85 percent that is what we have defined in the scaling policies then you should see that another instance will be initiated so likewise, uh, this is basically, uh, I have created steps to initiate a scaling policy that means to increase the number of servers whenever the threshold crosses. Likewise, here itself, you can add another policy to scale down the resources in case if the CPU utilization goes to a normal value. Fine guys, that's it from us. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.